Hello everyone, Molten here, back with another rapid game in our series. B3, this particular game. Uh, this is also known as the... What is it called? The Larson, Larson attack? Yeah, something like this. So, we can transpose back into a variation of the... Sicilian, I believe, with the move pawn to g6. We could also play the move pawn to c5 here. Let's go g6. I mean, if he gives up the bishop, I'm quite happy to play this position after bishop takes knight. Otherwise, we just fiend keto our pieces. And we'll just castle here. And this is sort of transposition back into a collie. By the way, you have to be very careful here not to play the move pawn to c5. Um, this is a trap I covered in one of my b3 um, videos. Because after c5 takes queen a5, c3, queen takes bishop a3 actually is a very nice variation which picks up a pawn on e7 so just be aware of that um, I could go for a double fianchetto here actually that would be fine or I could just play the move pawn to d6 and, and go into like a king's indian position so we can play the move pawn to e5 here takes takes knight g4 and win the pawn back I mean, this is probably the easiest way to equalize just go knight to g4 useful idea to remember just to get this e5 move in okay so we have the move bishop to e2 so we can play knight c6 we can play knight d7 we can just recapture the pawn okay let's, let's just recapture the pawn As we take back with the pawn. Queen trade should be fine for us. We got in the move pawn to pawn to e5, which is the main move we were aiming for. We can push the pawn forward again to e4, trade off bishops. But I want to wait. want to wait because if he plays knight to c3 I might be able to play e4 there and then put him in a pin I might also be able to play the rook to d2 I think knight a6 is a, a useful move a3 this this does weaken the b3 pawn so i'm immediately gonna target that rook goes to d1 yeah this a3 move was unnecessary um, because it weakens this pawn also the reason why i play knight a6 it, it's a very useful square for the knight in a lot of king's indian positions because depending on what white does, I can, I can bring the knight to these squares, or even drop it back after c6. Yeah, I think I just play bishop to f5. So I, I couldn't take the pawn because my rook's hanging, of course. And if I take the rook, then the bishop takes back and would cover this b3 pawn. So instead, I just go bishop f5. And yeah, white's in a lot of trouble here, I think, because the b3 pawn is very difficult to defend. If he ever plays the move pawn to b4, then he has to deal with knight to a4 coming up as well. Okay, 
So he's gone into a huge think and finally played the move knight to c3. Okay, so I suppose we, we take here, attacking the rook. So he moves the rook away. Now, do we have any forced wins? I don't think so. In which case, maybe, maybe I should just play the pawn to c6. Covers all these squares from the knight, so there's no counterplay here for white. And then next we just trade rooks. Okay, so I, I think I trade rooks and I can attack this pawn. So yeah, I can attack this pawn with knight a5 or or even knight to d2 is probably okay, but let's go knight a5, bishop e2, uh, bishop to e6. Okay, so b3. Here, g6. So I just want to point out in this particular position, if white goes for takes, takes, something like this, let's say he tries to go for the move pawn to c4. I think what you can do here as black is to avoid getting binded down, a good move here is to play the move pawn to d5 to try and break in the center. Now, for example, let's say we have captures, captures, even though our queen gets chased away. It's it's really like a good Scandinavian. I mean, you can even bring the queen back to d8 if you want to, but you could easily move it to a5 or to h5. And okay, the, the game can continue, for example, like this. But you see, black has a very comfortable position. Let's say something like this. If you play c6, c5, develop the rest of um, your pieces from there. But the bishop is very, very strong here. And the double pawns are, are not a big deal, in, in my opinion. So, as long as you keep the game in sort of a middle game and don't trade off too many pieces, um, it, it should be fine for black. So that's one option. There's also another option, if they play the move pawn to e4, you can actually play the move pawn to c5, this actually directly transposes I believe to one of the Sicilian lines um, in one of my uh, Sicilian repertoire videos, so you can go have a look at that video if you are not sure what to do, but yeah, this is a direct transposition because after the move pawn to e5 the idea is to go knight to d5, if they play pawn to e6 you can play f6 here and go into something like this, bishop takes or queen takes for example and then you can set up sort of a Maroxy bind structure with the move pawn to e5 at some point like this and black it's a quite a pleasant game because you block out this bishop entirely and also you prevent the move pawn to d4 from being played so this is a useful line but in the game after g6 e3 this allows us to go into this so you should avoid playing c5 in this position, that's very important because there is a trap here after pawn takes, queen a5 check, it looks like you're winning back the pawn but after the move pawn to c3, queen takes c5, bishop to a3, now you're actually losing a pawn here on e7 because there's no way for the queen to defend it. You can continue to play this position but it, I don't think it's very good for black at all. And I think white has all the winning chances here, so definitely don't want to fall into this particular trap. Because c5 is such a natural move here. Instead you go move pawn to d6, pawn to c4 here, normal, and then I think pawn to e5 just hits out in the center. It's useful to know this trick, just to trade off some pieces. Now, 
White could easily just ignore it, which um, may have been a better option, but after taking, we go um, knight to g4. Actually, it doesn't like this as much. It wants me to just immediately go pawn takes, takes, takes. So what happens after bishop takes e5? I want to sack another pawn with the move knight to c6. Okay, so it, it's saying there's some compensation here in regards to the active pieces from black. Followed by bishop f5 and so on. But okay, what happens after knight a3? Bishop f5. Bishop to d4. b6. So it's saying there's some compensation here for black. But um, I, I guess this is a line that you probably just have to know that it works. Um, I didn't, I didn't know this one, so I went for knight g4, which is, I guess, the more natural looking move. Bishop to e2, it still looks perfectly fine to me, um, and probably just transposes back. I think this is a mistake. I think white should have gone queen d2 or or knight to c3 here. I think would have been more interesting just to keep more pieces in play because after this exchanging everything and also giving me the open d file it's very very pleasant now i think black is um, doing quite well because of this threat of rook to d2 in a lot of positions and a3 i think is the losing mistake here so instead of a3 could have gone it's giving e4 i don't like e4 at all because e4 now this weakens the d4 square, so I have this plan of knight e6, knight d4, bringing the knight to a much better square. Now, yeah, but if you don't play e4, I'm not sure what else. It's suggesting maybe bishop c3, but this also feels a little bit awkward for white. But maybe this is better than what was played in the game. Uh, this one loses a pawn. Yeah, this one loses a pawn. But let's say knight d2 also doesn't work, by the way, because rook takes, takes, and knight takes b3. Would pick up a pawn and also win the rook back. So you can't play knight to d2, and yeah, b4 runs into knight a4 here. Oh, actually, even knight b3 is even stronger. Well, because if, if rook to a2, then you have rook takes, takes, and then bishop takes knight. And the rook on a2 is actually trapped. It's very interesting as well. c6. Yeah, c6 is one of these moves where once you're winning, you just want to make sure that there's no more counterplay left for your opponent. And here we can just round up the c4 pawn uh, with a winning position. So really it was about equal and then all of a sudden um, black was much better because after these queen trades and peace trades um, sort of helps black get their pieces into the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game and uh, a bit more familiar now with the Nimsy Larson from the black side. Thanks for watching. I will see you all on the next one. Take care.